Welcome back to Weekly. Joining me now to chat about North American real estate stocks is Andrew Moffs, Senior Portfolio Manager at Vision Capital. Thanks for coming back again on Weekly, Andrew. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about Vision and what you do as the hedge fund manager for the capital at Vision. So at Vision, we invest in real estate through the public markets. We focus on North America. We operate both long and short. We're net asset value investors, meaning we think like private equity individuals. We go out, we value the real estate of the REITs and real estate companies. And if the real estate is trading at a premium to the share price, we will go ahead and short the stock. Mm -hmm. If the real estate is trading at a discount, we will go ahead and go long. Oh, uh, it's simple. Very simple. <laughs> we're active, we're value-added strategic investors. We'll look to take advantage of that structural uh, mismatch. Mm -hmm. And over time, what that does is create the opportunities to buy real estate cheaper in the stock market than in the private market. And I know you're bullish on real estate now, which mm -hmm. seems somewhat counterintuitive, which is which, given what's going on with interest rates. Yeah. And viewers, last week I showed you a picture of a 10-year graph of the cable and telecom index in Canada and how technically it's broken down. Look at this picture here. This is showing you the yield on a U.S. 10-year government bond against the real estate index in the United States. And you'll notice it's not today, it's last decade. And look in between those two blue vertical lines. Interest rates marched higher, but real estate stocks marched higher too. You think it's going to happen again, don't you? Yeah, for us, the elephant in the room is the fallacy that REITs should underperform in periods of rising interest rates. We can show the opposite, and the graph right there does. I mean, you look at that. For all the fuss this year about whether the Fed's going to raise three times, four times, a decade ago, they raised interest rates uh, 17 times, 400 basis points. REITs outperformed the market substantially, and uh, we think that's going to happen here again. But... That was the housing bubble. That period was a housing bubble in the States. I could show you a graph of tech stocks in 99, and of course they marched higher until they didn't. So I would suspect that there was a lot of valuation expansion mm -hmm. as opposed to net operating income growth expansion in that price appreciation on that graph we showed our viewers. Aren't cap rates, aren't valuations pretty rich now for real estate? relative to rates? So the simplified valuation equation for real estate is what you said. It's price equals NOI, the rents from the, these properties divided by cap rate. Mm -hmm. Everyone is focused on that denominator. Interest rates, cap rates, interest rates, cap rates. Cap rate being? The yield that the, that the uh, real estate should produce in the first year. Right, okay. So when we, what we've focused on is the numerator, the net operating income. So right. we go sector by sector, property type by property type, geography across North America, and we look, how, what are the demand and supply influences on uh, net operating income? Should it grow? If it's gonna grow, we're okay taking that bet. Now, what kind of net operating income growth do you see for real estate over the next two, three years, let's say in the States right now, mm -hmm. relative to what we saw back then? Uh, you have to go sector by sector. Okay. And uh, we're very bullish, for example, in the industrial warehouse space. Mm -hmm. There's a secular change going on today. So whereas, okay, is Amazon, is that the reason for it? Yeah, I mean, yesterday, what did we learn? 100 million people uh, signed up for Amazon Prime. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Forget the fact that people are not stopping to consume. The whole supply chain has to change. These 100 million people, what do they want? They want their goods, forget about tomorrow. If they're in uh, urban areas, they want their goods in the next hour. Right. So where you read about the apocalypse that's going on in retail, we may not believe it, but leave that aside. Every negative article in the Wall Street Journal about malls and retail is a positive for warehouse space. So you like industrials. Mm -hmm. You don't like retail. Correct. Interesting. Okay. What about Canada versus the States? So the starting point for us is that the United States is on sale. That's what uh, it, that You're talking across the board or are you talking about industrials? Uh, across the board. Yeah. Okay. Net asset values. In some cases, some of the stocks we own are 30, 35% discounts. Uh, Why is that? Because right now, there's a bifurcation between the private market, the public market. The public market, you're seeing massive outflows for that whole fallacy that I talked about. People mm -hmm. are concerned about uh, rising interest rates. Why would they want to own REITs? They don't appreciate that there's so much dispersion within the space that, as I've said, industrial is a good place to be. Retail is not. You can make a lot of money at when the private market fundamentals are positive, and that's what we see today, coupled with the fact that there's so much private capital still chasing real estate, about $150 billion 
estimated on the sidelines. But viewers can see on this graph that that same 10-year graph of the U.S. real estate index that I showed our viewers of the telco space last week, mm -hmm. not only has it broken its trend line to the downside, it's also trading below the 200-day moving average, which is a very bearish signal. So these stocks may get cheaper before you're right. So connecting the dots, what do you need? You need a catalyst. If you have private buyers sitting on the sidelines, we believe we could be going through, like we saw in the late cycle of 06, 07, mm -hmm. uh, we could be seeing we're on the precipice of an M&A cycle. So industrials, what else do you like sector-wise in real estate? Uh, we've, for, since our fund's existence, uh, we've been bulls on the residential housing space. Mm -hmm. So that's particularly apartments, multifamily units for rent, both sides of the border. Mm -hmm. They have traits that are both defensive. So if I'm wrong and uh, the economy is going to slow down and uh, people still need a place to live. And what's defensive about this space is, of course, they got financing even through the depths of the financial crisis, whether it was CMHC here in Canada mm -hmm. or Fannie and Freddie in the United States. Now, here in Canada, a couple of provinces that I can think of off the top of my head, BC and Ontario have rent controls. Mm -hmm. So is being in the apartment business a good business? The amazing thing is that, for example, in Ontario, rent control has actually been a boon to apartment landlords. What did it do? It discouraged development. You look at the apartment stock throughout uh, the greater Toronto area. These, on average, these are buildings built in the 1960s, 1970s. The big secret sauce has been vacancy decontrol. So you might move into your apartment, Rents don't increase. They go up by government-mandated amount every year. Mm -hmm. When you leave that apartment, rents can be marked to market, meaning you can go from the in-place rent today to what the market demands. Right, right. So when you look at the apartment space in Canada, what do you like? We like value-added apartment landlords. What's that mean? A company like Interrent. Mm -hmm. What do they do? They either buy apartments that... Uh, haven't been loved, you know, mom and pop owners that haven't been as sophisticated. Right. They uh, will take a $900 rent on average, invest capital, $15,000 a unit, but then be able to invest that capital, new kitchen, new bathroom, whatever it is, hallway lighting, and be able to increase the rent substantially over time. The trick is over time. So $100, $150 increases. Or they'll pick markets like Hamilton. Mm -hmm. You want to pick markets where you're going to find job growth. Uh, mm -hmm. affordability and they were very early in that market and they have have assembled a really great portfolio and other apartment guys here in Canada I guess there aren't that many there's Capri there's Killam mm -hmm. uh, there's Boardwalk and that's it right yeah all, all good companies uh, Main Street Equities as well that's another okay. value add okay. operator uh, focused out west uh, we like that company because they're very good at doing what we said buy buy broken assets fix them up rent them out thanks very much Andrew okay we've talked apartments we've talked Industrials, we've got a few more segments to talk about with Andrew Moff, Senior Portfolio Manager at Vision Capital. It's a show on real estate, and you're watching weekly on BNN.